Hello and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this video, I'm going to take all of the knowledge I've learned and build the ultimate performance troubleshooting tip guide. That's what I'm going to call it. So I have a couple different videos out there of how to get a performance boost and a smoothness within Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. And after doing multiple different tests to see what works with what, these are the tips I can give you that maybe can give you the best overall performance for your sim. Now understand that every single system is going to be unique upon its own. Everyone has different U uh, CPUs, everyone different graphic cards, different memory, different motherboards, different versions of Windows. All of this is going to play a factor into your ultimate setup you have for your sim. Now my sim, I have a 14700K processor with a 5080 graphics card and 64 gigs of RAM running Windows 11. Again, everyone's going to be a little bit different how they work. So some of these things may not work for you. Some of them may be the opposite of what works for others. But these are the things that have worked for my system. And understand the following as well. I do have two ultra wide monitors, one that is displaying just Flight Sim 2024. The other is just for side stuff like a browser and whatnot, right? So I am only running at uh, the primary monitor. It is an OLED. It is a V-Sync, or sorry, it is a, uh, a, uh, a FreeSync compatible monitor. And it is a 3440 by 1440p. It can go up to 240 hertz or something, but I have it capped. I have it capped at 60. Now my FPS, as you see right now on the screen, let's bring it up, is right there, 100. I have my system capped at 100 FPS, period. So my Hertz are set at 100. I don't let it go above that. And I feel that's the sweet spot. That's where I don't max out my GPU. And that's where I don't have any sort of massive spikes with the uh, CPU trying to catch up to GPU or vice versa. This just seems to be the happy medium for me. Everyone, again, is going to be a little bit different. I like that 100 FPS. It seems smoother for me compared to, like, say, 90 or 80. And the, the game between 100 and 116 isn't as much as... Uh, I could see at least personally. Some people can see it. I don't see it. Okay, so you see here we have traffic. This is beyond ATC traffic. I also have multiplayer traffic on as well. And I'm getting 100% or say 100, 100 FPS here in Atlanta, which is the Imagine Sim Atlanta. So we have traffic. We have uh, the iFly 737 Max loaded in. So we're a third party airport. Third party traffic. This is FSLTL traffic as well. This is with the mod to reduce the textures of it. And real time weather looking pretty gloomy, uh, gloomy out there. So you can see I am looking pretty good. My GPU used to almost 8 out of 14. So I still have plenty of headroom when it comes to my VRAM memory. So all looking pretty good. Now the iFly is not very heavy on the, on the VRAM itself. It's much heavier in the Phoenix. But in this video, I want to showcase this plane itself. Okay, so let's jump into the tips. The very first tip I can give you is you need NVIDIA Inspector. And go ahead and download NVIDIA Inspector. If you Google it, you'll be able to find NVIDIA Inspector on the internet. That would be, uh, let me bring that up here for you. This guy here. So NVIDIA Inspector, when you have NVIDIA Inspector, it defaults to the global settings. Let me bring that up on the screen. It defaults to the global settings. In the global settings, all you have to do is type in Microsoft and then scroll on down to Flight Sim 2024. If you scroll on down here towards the bottom area, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick here. They hide it pretty good sometimes. Is right here, rebar. So R bar enabled or enable. I have it disabled. Some people have found that it is better with it on. Some people have it turned off. For me, I save a little bit of FPS, in uh, more so in the VRAM, with it disabled. And it's it, it's a little bit. It's not crazy. It's not like you're getting a whole gig back. But I feel like I get somewhere between three to 500 megabytes back. And that can mean, mean the difference of my SIM getting into the stutter fest or not. So I do recommend if you have it on, try turn it off disabled and to do that just click this button here and go to uh, disabled instead of enabled and then hit the apply button and that's will that will disable rebar by default it should be on if it's an on if it's enabled in your bios as well and that's a whole different video not gonna be in this one okay so now that you have rebar disabled or enabled depending on your system 
The next thing I want to talk about is the NVIDIA control panel. People have all kinds of different videos out there about changing this, that, and the other. Look at it. If you scroll through here, I don't have anything really changed. I don't have anything real changed. The major thing I had changed is my V sync. I have vertical sync on because, well, I found out, at least on my system, VRR, so free sync, doesn't quite work as well as I like it to when I have a dual monitor setup like I do. So I have fixed refresh for my monitors, which means I do have G sync slash uh, free sync turned off and I have it free. Uh, I sorry, I have a fixed refresh rate. Again, this isn't going to work for everyone, but for me, it seems like this was causing frame rate or frame gen to disable when I click on a separate monitor and then try to click back on. That's where I'd have that happen the most. I found that having it fixed refresh solves that issue. I've toyed with having it fixed refresh on just flight sim and then uh, you know, let's say Cyberpunk 2020, 2077, I have it on, but it seems like just have it off period. My system performs the best it possibly can. So we go over here to my setup. You can see it is disabled. It is not on. So I don't have G-Sync enabled on my system. I understand that what the benefits are the G-Sync, but for me, so far, it seems like it's not. Outside that, like I said, going through the menu here, I have absolutely everything else pretty much default here. That's the only two things I changed in here. So don't have to go in here and twiddle and tweak every single thing because they may not make a difference. They may for your system, but for my system, it didn't seem like it made that big of a difference. So let's go and turn that off now. Move on to the next tips that I can give you. And that is the NVIDIA uh, control panel, or sorry, control uh, NVIDIA app itself. In the, in the NVIDIA app, very similar to the NVIDIA um, control panel, you can change and twiddle and tweak things, right? So you can turn on smooth motion and whatnot. I played with it. doesn't seem to work all that great for me. But for me, because of Flight Sim uh, 2024 issues with frame gen, I use frame gen rate 3. And uh, in the past, at least, Flight Sim 2024 did not like 3. So I have forced on in the NVIDIA app itself to 3. Okay, so I have this set to 3. And that's the only thing I have set in here that's different. Everything else is default. You can see the first, uh, the, the fixed refresh rate. That's coming from the uh, NVIDIA control panel. So again, nothing else changed with that. Now, before we move on to the next setting, I want, or the next app, I want to look at one other thing, and that is the actual settings within the sim. So let's go to the settings here. And in the settings menu, you can see here, this is what I currently have. You see it says two, well, it's actually three. It's actually forcing out three. I have TAA on 95%, so you can see, and I'm not, I'm not even using DLSS at this point. The big thing is right here, this 50% monitor refresh rate. So what that is saying is that my monitor is currently capped at what? 100, which means it's gonna cap it at 50 FPS if I have this set. Now, you won't be able to do this if you have frame gen on. So if you turn frame gen off first, if you're using it, turn it off. This will then be an option to, to uh, change it from 100. I think it defaults to 100 down to 50, etc. In sim update three for flight sim 2024, this is going to be replaced for the most part with capped frame rates. So in there, you'd be able to put in the actual frame rate you want your sim to cap out at. Understand the following, which is if you cap it at 50, FPS, frame gen is going to double it to 100. Okay, so understand how that works out. At least that's where, how it works right now with the frame rate limit. I'm not 100% sure how it works with Sim Update 3, but I think it is that way. I think it just doubles your frame. So if you cap it at 100, it's not really capping anything because your frame gen is going to go up to whatever your monitor is going to do. But that's why I have my monitor cap at 100. So in theory, my system, it should not matter. If we scroll on down here, you can see here's all the settings I use. A lot of mediums, a lot of ultras mixed in some highs in there as well. These are the best settings for me. Again, these all are going to be all individually uh, set up how you prefer. Okay, now here's another really big thing. If you don't know, you, now you know. And that is auto FPS. This is a legend of a piece of software. I tell you what, it really is. Let me go ahead, get back out of this menu real quick. Let's go look in the sim. 
Okay, let those sims stabilize again. You see the uh, the, the RAM's up, or sorry, the GPU's up just a little bit now because you get more traffic moving around, doing its thing. 100 FPS on there. But if we bring up here, auto FPS, this thing is amazing. So what I have with F, uh, auto FPS is I have it capped. I have it capped at 100 FPS. It's using my multi-frame gen, which means, you see right now it's, it's giving me 160. Well, what it's doing is it's automatically lowering down the terrain LOD and the objects LOD when needed to achieve the target goal. That is the most important thing to understand is doing what it can. So what you can see out in the distance, I'm not seeing all of, you know, the bigger uh, buildings out there. They're not as clear. Well, that's because it's lowering down the quality or the settings automatically to maintain the best performance it possibly can or get as close as it can to that 100 FPS. And you see it's overachieving right now right? Well, that's mostly because I'm off screen. So it's kind of confused what it's doing. If I click on expert mode, well, this is where I have it set up for custom. And what that means is that the max level I let it do is, is, um, is number two here, right? And that's because I don't want it to go all the way down. I don't want to lose massive quality. I want to get good performance, but I also don't want to have massive quality. And I have it automatically set. So that's automatic reducing when the VRAM maxes out. So VRAM again, right here. So once this gets close to like 13 or so, auto FPS is going to kick in and be like, yo, let's, let's reduce some things so we can get the best performance. I also don't want to mess with certain things. So you can see here, clouds, trees, grass, plants are all unchecked. I'm fine with the other stuff though. I'm fine with the shadows. I'm, I'm fine with the terrains uh, stuff, the off, uh, off terrain stuff we're going to talk about here in a moment. And so all this other stuff, I'm okay with it messing with because it doesn't really mess with the quality of the sim for me. But again, that's going to be all up to those people, what you want with it. So this is one of the greatest tools known to mankind, Auto FPS. Highly recommend you get it, download it. It's 100% free, and it is a godsend when it comes to performance in the sim. Now we talked about that. Let's go over to the next thing that's awesome, and that is DLS, sorry, DLSS Swapper. Now this allows you to swap out to the latest DLS preset. So what, what this is, is it's the latest version that NVIDIA has come up with for the best quality of DLSS. Now, as you've seen, I do not use DLSS for Flight Sim, but I use it for other titles. So I do have the latest and greatest. Now for the preset, it's going to have it set to the, to the latest. And most people say that preset K is the best. And again, I, this is so minor. It, it's mostly for ghosting. So you can see right here, I'm not sure how well the video, well, I guess it's not pulling up video because uh, this is in the way, but some of the shadows have flickering and stuff like that. That's where pre Present K is supposed to help the most. But you can mess with the DLS versions here. Now, I have the latest and greatest installed and using in Flight Sim 2024. But, of course, I'm not using DLSS. I am using FrameGen, though. And I'm using the latest version of FrameGen. So these come out sometimes with new games, right? You can use the latest and greatest. It doesn't mean it's going to be better. It doesn't mean it's going to be more stable. It actually could cause more problems, but that's something to experiment. And again, this is DL DLSS Swapper, and this is a great, great tool to use when it comes to trying to figure out the best performance for your sim. The final tip I can give you, and this was the biggest improvement I've ever seen out of all the things I've tried with Flight Sim. This was definitely by far the biggest improvement consistency and that is the trick that i found over well as it was mentioned to me but i saw it initially at flight sim uh the flight sim forms and that is going into your user config dot otp folder and this is in your app data folder or it might be somewhere else for the microsoft store so this you'll have to do some research on to locate where it is the user config dot opt if you search for that on your uh wherever your um C drive is on your PC, you should be able to find it. But anyways, if you scroll on down here, you're looking for this dude right here, off screen terrain pre-caching. Essentially what this is supposed to do is when you pan left, pan right, it's supposed to automatically load in the stuff on the side so that when you pan those direction, it isn't causing massive stutters, right? Cause it's preloaded. Well, you're also loading in things you may not use. Right, so you're not going to be panning left and right because this, the plane is going to slowly turn to left, slowly turn to right, and with that doing it, it's going to load that stuff in by itself without needing to pre-cache that information. Well, so for some reason, it seems like a Sobo might have broken it, and hopefully this is fixed in some, some update three. So this may not even 
be a thing that fixes it for you, but you can always obviously check it out. So I have it set to uh, enabled is zero, which means it's not enabled. It means it does not work. It doesn't do anything. Even though it shows in the, in the menu, it's set for ultra or something. It is currently set to zero. It's not doing a damn thing. And I tell you what, this gave me the best overall smoothness I've ever experienced in the sim period. So I do recommend if you are having issues with stuttering or smoothness of the sim, give this a shot because you might be surprised at how well this works. So again, thanks everyone for watching this video. This isn't going to work for everyone. These tips and tricks aren't going to work for everyone. These work for my system. So keep that in mind, as I said before, but maybe one or two of these things might benefit you going forward with your sim. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.